Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Diva. This is video eight, and today we're talking about the Digital Oscillator. So this one is modeled from the Roland JP8000 and comes with seven different waveforms. So let's go over here to the presets over here, go to eight templates, and let's load up this init digi hubi. I'm not really sure exactly how that's pronounced, but load up that one and this mix number up here. Let's turn this all the way to the left because we have two oscillators and we want to go all the way to the left to listen to the first one and kind of go through these waveforms here. So this first waveform here, if we take a listen to it, that's going to be the multi-saw. It's seven stacked saw waves. Detune, adjust the tuning of the saws. And then this multi over here kind of adjusts the balance between the original saw and the detune saw. So let's take a listen to that. Here's the detune. And then the multi, which is the balance of the original and the detune saws. All right, moving on from there, we have the second one called tri wrap. Now the manual says is a wrapped triangle wave. Positive peaks appear at the bottom of the wave and negative peaks appear at the top. Wrap adjusts the threshold for the wrap function and bend adjusts the horizontal symmetry. Now this is one of the weirdest shapes I've ever seen in a synth before. Let's turn this down just a little bit here. Now that is just bizarre. Now we can change this bend here that changes the horizontal symmetry. And then we have the wrap. There's a very interesting shape there. The third one is going to be noise. This is a digital noise, digital white noise with a resonant low pass filter. Tune adjust the cutoff and cue adds resonance with the loss of low frequencies. This is probably one of my favorite sounding noises in the entire synth. I think with this noise here, you can make some really cool wind effects or something kind of like that, especially with the cue kind of up kind of high. And keep in mind, you have two oscillators that you can play with. Basically, this is a mirror image of the other. So the fourth one here, this one is called feedback. And the manual says is a saw sent through a short delay with feedback, creating tones similar to an electric guitar. Now the tune adjusts the length of the delay while feedback sets the amount of feedback also adds a lots, lots of digital distortion, which you will see. <laughs> So I could just imagine with this slow changing of this tuning here and then maybe having noise in the other one, that can sound pretty creepy and pretty good sounding at the same time. Pretty interesting. So the fifth one is called pulse right over here. And the manual says is a square pulse mixture. PW adjusts the pulse width while spike up first turns the saw wave into a saw at three. So we can look up here in just a moment here, then multiplies the saw for a complex pseudo sync effect. Spike up can create some serious aliasing and boy, can it. Let's turn this down just a little bit more. It's kind of, this can get a little out of control sometimes. Yeah, so this oscillator has a lot of strange shapes in here and a lot of ways to change those as well. And then number six here, this is going to be the sawtooth and the manual says is a sawtooth wave plus synchronized sine. Harmonics adjust the level and polarity of the sine wave set to 50 for pure sawtooth with no sine component. Bend continuously shifts the sine and octave up. So let's take a listen to that. And a little bit higher notes. This is an oscillator you can spend a lot of time in. And last but not least, we have triangle. So this one is a triangle plus synchronized sine and octave higher. Harmonics adjust the level of the sign while bend adjust horizontal symmetry. You might like to watch what happens to the waveform in the scope, which is why we have it right over here.
So these are going to be all of our shapes here. We have seven on the left-hand side and seven on the right because we have two individual oscillators. And like I mentioned before, this mix knob down here is the balance between the two. So let's double click our detune so it's not too out of control. And this brings us to this modulation section in the middle here. So right now, all of these are going to be set to LFO2. So for example, let's say we're just listening to oscillator number one here. And let's turn this up just a little bit here. And we turn this knob on. So that means that this sign over here, oscillator number one, is going to be enabled for modulation. And this knob right here that's tied to LFO2 is going to be doing the modulation. And it's going to be affecting the tuning as we can see over here. Pretty self-explanatory and the same goes for this one over here so if you want to have both of these doing the same thing then you can just select this here so now oscillator number one and two will be able to be modulated with the center knob changing the pitch from lfo number two and we can go to the mix here in the center and prove that and we can turn this off so that steady one is going to be number two as we don't have any modulation going so that's basically how that works. This left one over here is going to be oscillator number one. The one on the right is oscillator number two. And depending if the switch is on or off, it's going to enable this center knob here to be pitch or to be modulated. In this case, for this first one, it's going to be the pitch. So let's turn this one off here and let's listen to just number one again. So we have a static tone. Let's double click that as to keep it together here. Now let's turn this one on over here with the switch here. And then this is going to affect this detune. As remember, this is going to be the effect that we hear. Right, so we turn this on here. This over here is going to be the parameter that we're going to be modulating. So let's turn this off over here, and then we have multi. Let's turn this on and take a listen to that. So it's basically kind of just moving this knob back and forth like that. So hopefully that makes sense over there. Now moving on to this pot or this bottom panel over here, we have the heart sync over here, and this is basically syncing oscillator number two to one. If you're unsure of that process, check out the triple VCO video I did on the oscillators where we kind of run through the whole process with a visual demonstration. And it's a lot easier sometimes to understand if we have a visual component also listening to it at the same time. I think that's a good way to learn things. Now over down here, we have this tune mod, and it's basically doing the same thing as the other oscillator panels do with tune. Uh, tuning pitch modulation here. So we can go to envelope two. Let's select LFO two as we've kind of been used to now. And there we go. Now, now we have cross over here and it's the amount oscillator one frequency modulates oscillator number two. So let's take a listen to that. So you get some really crazy sounds that way. And then we have ring over here, kind of similar to the last video that we talked about where it replaces oscillator number two's output with ring modulation between the two oscillators. So with the cross modulation and ring modulation, who knows what could happen here. And then over here we have the high quality button over here and this basically just reduces aliasing artifacts. Maybe you want the aliasing, and if you do, you can turn this off. It's totally up to you. And then the very last thing that the manual mentioned that I think should also be mentioned here is says, please note that automating the digital oscillators wave switches, so these different ones over here, can cause massive spikes and therefore is best avoided. So massive CPU spikes, that is, and it should be avoided. So I thought I would mention that before we close out this video. Oh, that is creepy. I wonder if some unison on that. Yeah, so with this oscillator, a lot of possibilities are possible. So with all these seven here and the different functions here, modulation here, cross modulation, ring modulation, all the modulation you can imagine, there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. So hopefully that uh, explains the digital oscillator. Hopefully you learned something. And thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.